Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. How you all feel? Pretty good. Good? Okay, I'm feeling good too. Y'all feel like praising him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's good. Yes, Hallelujah. Is. This is the day that he has made. And we are going to rejoice and be glad in this day. That is right. You know, it's a wonderful thing when you look at the scriptures, and the scriptures tell you that um he said, keep this day holy. Yes. Set apart, should I say? Mm -hmm. Keep this day set apart, and that's what we're supposed to do. Keep yes. it. Keep it a clean day, but you know what? We're supposed to live that way every day. That's right. See, spiritually, we're at rest. Mm -hmm. We're constantly on a Sabbath spiritually, mm -hmm. but physically, we do Sabbath once a week, mm -hmm. you see. But basically, you know, we set this time aside. So today, you're supposed to treat this day like it's a, a, a righteous day, you know, a day that you serve uh, our Father. Mm -hmm. You know, give our Father um, time and prayer and meditation and and even rest in too, because they would work six days, and on the Sabbath you're supposed to rest. Now we you do see? understand too that things have been switched around, and yeah. that no one is sure about anything. We just did right. rest on that. We want to make that clear. But right now we are all walking by faith. We're all living by faith. That's right. Because things have been changed around, and the Most High is going to look at the thoughts and intents of our heart too. So we want to keep that in mind as well. That's right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Today's lesson is titled. The revealing of the two witnesses, and we added some on it. And, and the, the end time calamity that's coming. That's coming, exactly. And and this is uh, one study I've been studying this for years uh, about the two witnesses and confirming who that they are, who they are, and all that kind of information. So we're going to bring a little light to this now. I don't have the scriptures in the. Um, uh, or did I put them in there? Some, yeah, I did. I did put some of them in there. Okay, good. The last ones I didn't get a chance to put in there. But um, one of the books that we're going to be reading from, just so you know ahead of time, is On Our Site Watchman Reports. If you want to go real quick and download the book, it's called The Gospel of Nicodemus. Okay, You can go to that link that's under the description of the video. So the video you're looking at right now, in the description there, where you see it, it should say more or something like that, and you'll see the uh, Gospel of Nicodemus, and then there's a link right under it. That link, you can go to that, to our site, and download the book, and therefore you'll be able to read the scripture and see it for yourself where it talks about the gospel, uh, where it talks about the two witnesses. But anyway, let's go ahead on and let's have prayer, and then we're going to have our meditation, and then Sophia's going to give us the scripture today. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Hallelujah. 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 Father Yah. We thank you so much for this day. This is the day that you have made, Father God. Hallelujah. And you've made tomorrow. Hallelujah. And we know, Father Yah, that you have already planned, Father Yah, how these days are going to go. We know that your will will be done. And we know that nothing can stop your will. And we know, Father Yah, that you have a place for us, Father. And we ask you, Father, that you continue to guide us and bless us, Father, yeah, and show us your ways, Father, yeah. Continue to guide us into all truth, Father, yeah. There's been so much tampering with this and tampering with that. People are changing truths into lies, and, and it's just so much stuff going on, Father, yeah. And sometimes it can get confusing. But we know, Father, yeah, you already yeah. prophesied and told us, Father, yeah, that we would be around darkness, and the darkness will be everywhere. But you said you will give your word as a lamp to our feet, a light into our path. And you also said that your ruach will lead and guide us, hallelujah, into all truth, hallelujah. And so, Father, we count on you, Father. We trust you, Father. We believe you, Father, hallelujah, that this is what you're going to do for us, Father, yeah. That you're going to shine your light and you're going to guide us through all this darkness, Father, yeah. And you're going to continue to bless us, Father, yeah. Because we humble ourselves before you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We humble ourselves totally before you, Father. We give our hearts to you totally, Father. You said in your word that we should love you with all our heart, mind, and soul. And we do, Father. Hallelujah. We cry out to you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 We love you, Hallelujah. Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Father, we will always worship you. Hallelujah. We will always seek you, Father. Hallelujah. We will always be led of you. Hallelujah. And we love you so much, Father. Yeah. Just like your word said, Father, yeah, that nothing, hallelujah, shall separate me, hallelujah, from the love of our Father. Hallelujah. Nothing shall separate us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yah is so good. Yes, he I is. love him so much. I yes, tell you, I just love him so much because he loves us. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, you know what's amazing about this whole thing? When I um it was done research and, and just studying his word. And what amazed me is that no one really deserves anything. No one. <laughs> Do no you one. not know that everyone, by according to the scriptures, should be judged according to their sins? Mm -hmm. But with his people, what does he do? He said, I'm going to just chastise you. Mm -hmm. No one really deserves his kingdom. If you go by works, who really deserves it? Mm -hmm. You see? So you know what, what's amazing? Therefore, when we make it there, we know it's by his grace. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. It's like, man, we, we could have went somewhere else, but we're going to be with him in his kingdom because our father, at the time of our ignorance, he just went. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. At the time of our ignorance, he went and he said, that's okay. That's my child. I'm going to chastise my children. Mm -hmm. Isn't that some those whom he loved, he chastised? Yeah. Wow. I tell you, that's amazing. Uh, Sophia, give me your scripture. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. A false balance is an abomination to God, but a just way is his delight. When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is, wis is wisdom. Wow. Yeah. Re God, read man. that first part of that scripture again. A false balance is abomination to God. Wow. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. A false balance mm -hmm. is an abomination to Yah. Wow. Mm -hmm. How about that? Go ahead and start the recording on this one and turn the um the monitor around on it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Wow, that does something. Isn't that something? A, a, a false balance? Mm -hmm. Wow. So it's an abomination. It's an abomination. You know why? Because Get that that off balance. So you're supposed to be balanced in, in the most high. Supposed to be well balanced in everything. A person that's unbalanced, guess what? Can't judge things. Mm -hmm. They're off in their judgment. Mm -hmm. They can't judge things at all because they're, 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 therefore it's an abomination mm -hmm. because they'll judge righteous things and make them wrong, and they'll judge wrong things and make them right. Like the Pharisees. That's Pharisees. That's right, like the Pharisees. That was Proverbs 11 to the person that asked. One and two. One and two. Proverbs yes. 11. One and two. Hallelujah. So let's go ahead on with our meditation. Uh, give me a moment. Let me bring this up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, for those of you out there that are new to this, which I doubt you know, most people, we, we usually get people to come back, but every now and then we get some new people that come. But I like to say this so that they'll understand why we do this meditation. So most people aren't used to meditation. You know, I've, I've been in churches and I've, I've seen other people who just, who teach, they don't really deal with the meditation part of it. And the reason for it is Eastern religion has really made people think that meditation originated from the Asians, you know, uh, from the Buddhists and, or, or the um, uh, Hindus, but actually, it didn't. Meditation origin originated in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. This was something that was originally ours that we did, mm -hmm. and they have taken it and used it toward their gods. You see, as they but, do everything. <laughs> yes, they do everything. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so, this meditation I've learned over the years is very powerful. I mean, it's it's something that have made a huge difference in my life. You know. Uh, as soon as I can get this thing to respond here. Okay, there we go. But it, it has made a huge difference in my mm -hmm. life, you know, as far as um, just, it, it's been incredible, you know. And I urge everyone, when you get a chance, take time out and meditate. Meditate. You don't 
you don't speak these things to make it so they're already true. Mm -hmm. You just try to, because we have a problem with believing, mm -hmm. you see. So that's why he says, um, labor to enter into his rest. Well, what's the laboring that you need to do? Believe. believe. <laughs> you need to labor to believe. Why? Mm -hmm. Because there's so much unbelief in our minds, mm -hmm. right? Because technically, technically, okay, faith, the scriptures let you know how powerful faith is, right? Yes. A person can walk on water if you get faith. That's right. But you go out and try to walk on that water, right? Without that faith. <laughs> Without that faith, what do you think will happen? You don't right? start Exactly. So technically, if we really have the faith, the scripture says nothing shall be impossible to you. So, wow. Can you imagine if we set out and just started meditating on a mass scale every day, just putting aside hours at a time to just meditate, huh? massage this brain. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. it, it, I'm telling you, it, it would be so powerful. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. Meditation and speaking his word. The scripture says faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing what? The word of the Yah. Word of Yah. Mm -hmm. That's right. So hearing the word of Yah more and more. And, and speaking it too. And speaking it too. That's right. And this is why me and my wife, we play med I have meditation CDs we play at night. We sometimes every now and then we may play scriptures at night, you know, and we'll just play them in the room, play them down low so we can pick them up in our mind. And mm -hmm. you'd be surprised. Sometimes I had dreams, I, and and, it, and and the word would be going forth, and, and I'll be speaking the word, and it'd be just amazing how that how that word comes into your dreams. Even, yes, you know? I was going to say sometimes it'll get in your dreams, and certain scriptures will wake you up. Yes, yeah, sure will. Certain scriptures I've heard at night and be like. You know, it just yeah, you yeah, right that's right. Sleeping, you're like, I gotta focus on that for a minute. It's strange, but yeah. it happens like that sometimes. That's right. Almost as if the Most High wants you to hear that particular thing. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. I've had that happen a few times too. When you hear that, you'd be sleeping. You hear the scripture. You like, wow, I gotta remember that. Where, yeah. where is that? I've actually yeah. gotten up and said, um, got a pencil out of the nightstand, yeah. and wrote it down real quick, and went back to sleep. So <laughs> I, I can't forget this one right here. That's right. <laughs> and I, and the one thing I used to do all we, me and my wife, we keep trying to keep pad and pencil near the bed because mm -hmm. sometimes when you're meditating you're praying or when you're sleeping the most high will give you dreams he'll give you visions or he'll speak to you and you you have to be ready you know mm -hmm. what i mean you have to be ready to write those things down exactly hallelujah but let's do this meditation hallelujah everyone repeat after me no weapon no <laughs> that is formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rise against me in judgment, God shall condemn. I can do all things through the Messiah that strengthens me. We have the victory. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We are more than conquerors through Yahushua. Yah before us. Who can be against us? We have the victory. We are victorious. We are healed by Yahushua's stripes. We are healed. No plague shall come nigh our dwelling. No sickness. No demon. No pestilence. No weakness. I am strong. I am strong. I am strong. I am fearless in you. I am strong and very courageous. Hallelujah. 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 And do you believe it? Yeah. Huh? Do you believe those words? Hallelujah. 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 I believe it. I believe it. Hallelujah, Father. Yeah. I believe the words of this meditation. I believe it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yeah. I believe it. Hallelujah. You know, that's the difference between a person being healed and not being healed. That's the difference between a person receiving his blessing from the most high and not receiving it that's the difference in a person getting a miracle and not getting it it's all in that right there believing isn't that something believing it seems like it's so easy don't it yes it really is that's why he said my yoke is easy because all you have to do is really believe that's yes. why he said this is the work Mm -hmm. That's what he told. He told the apostles. They said, "What is the work? What, what is what work can we do that we will, that we may work the works of of, of, of our Father?" Mm 
What must we do? And he said, this is the work that you believe. That you believe. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> because if you believe, all the works will follow. Mm -hmm. You see? But see, that's why, and I, I'm sorry I'm going off a little bit, but I want you to hear this. So think about what I'm saying here. Mm -hmm. um, James said, faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And works without faith is dead too. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. You see that? Mm -hmm. So if you, if, you, if you believe, then the works are going to follow because you believe in it. If, if I, Imagine this here, right? A person believes, right? Person comes to you and he tells you, say, you know what? I believe that I can um, name something. Okay, I believe. I believe I can fly. Yeah. I, <laughs> why won't you go fly? <laughs> because you really don't believe. That. <laughs> you really don't believe, it, right? <laughs> a person can say, hey, I believe I can um, plant a garden. Well, you believe it, huh? Yeah. But why won't you go do it? Do you really believe it then? If you don't have any works, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the same thing, a person can have the works and not have the faith, mm -hmm. you see? So it's kind of like they both go hand in hand. And you know, there's also a scripture that says, I believe, but Yah help my unbelief. That's right. So that's that's the, those words again speaking. If you know that you have some unbelief, you have to say those words. Father, help my unbelief. That's right. Help my unbelief. So that I can line up with what your word says. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Wow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Let's go into the lesson and reveal another two witnesses. So let's go right to Revelation. This is Revelation chapter 11, and we're going to read verse 1 through 3. Okay, Revelations chapter 11, verse 1 through 3. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of Yahuwah, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the other people. And the holy city they shall tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. Okay. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. You well, said 13? Yeah, 13. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There are two olive trees and the two menorahs standing before Yah of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in manner be killed, in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall come, overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sedom and Mitraim, where all also our Adonai was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a half, the Ruach of life from Yahuwah entered into them, and they stood up on their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's something. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to under, uh, understand this passage and look at what's going on. This is in the last days. As a matter of fact, when Yah pours out his wrath, it's going to come through these two guys, these mm -hmm. two uh, prophets. Okay. 
two witnesses is what the scripture calls them here. Okay. Now, so at their word, it says they have power to shut up heaven of rain. Mm -hmm. Who did that in the scriptures? Elijah. Elijah. That's right. Elijah sure did. <laughs> now, I want you to see something here. Okay. Now, they're going to be clothed in sackcloth. And then it says something about these two men. Here, there's a couple of things I want you to see. Let me go further down. Okay, verse four. It said, These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before Elohim or before Yah of the earth. Now, if any man hurt the hurt them, fire proceeds out. So if anybody try to do anything to them, fire gonna proceed out of their mouth. So but now how long are they gonna be able to do this? These two witnesses. There's a time period. Sure is. Mm -hmm. Verse three. Mm -hmm. It says 1,203 score days, that's three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is where we get the three and a half years. That's why you see that three and a half years is in the scriptures quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for three and a half years, these two men are going to be able to call down Yah's wrath on the earth as they see fit. And they, of course, Yah put it in them to, um, to speak his wrath on mm -hmm. the earth. Mm -hmm. So now the whole world is going to see these two fellas, right? Mm -hmm. The whole world is going to see them, okay? These two witnesses. So these two witnesses are going to be doing so much harm to the earth, the whole earth is going to know about it. Mm -hmm. Now, how's the whole earth going to know about it? Isn't that internet. strange? Probably internet, isn't that mm -hmm. something? And television. How about that? Radio. So the, everybody in radio is going to be, uh, oh, man, the two mm -hmm. witnesses are spoke again. They spoke and said this is going to happen, and it's happening. So yeah. everyone is going to be like, like, wow, these two witnesses, these, this is the scriptures unfolding. They're going to see it. And people, so they went, went finally, what's going to stop it? Uh -huh. Okay. First of all, they couldn't kill them until two and a half years are done. After the two and a half years is done, the scripture says a beast. Out of the bottomless pit is going to come forth and 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 kill him. These two witnesses, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to understand something, right? And think about this, right? They lay dead in the street for three days, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then they get up after three days. What's the point in that? Think about that for a minute. There's something significant about that three days I see <laughs> yeah. in terms of resurrection. That's right. <laughs> so what's the point in them dying, though? I mean, here they had all this power, and no one could kill them, right? Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden they die, only to just get back up in three days. And then when they get back up, they're going to be caught up into the heavens. Mm -hmm. Now, I tell you why there's a reason for all of this. All of this stuff makes a lot of sense, okay? Now. One key thing that was spoken of here, I want you to look at this here. This is verse four. It says, these are two olive trees and, the, and two candlesticks standing before Yah and of the earth. Okay, what is it talking about there? Hmm? Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. What do you mean by these are the two olive sticks? Well, we're gonna go to it. Go to Zechariah Zachar chapter four. Zechariah chapter 4, and you're going to read uh, verse 1 through, well, not all of it, just, um, I'll get the first part of it for you. Eliah, you, you have your Bible? I have it up on the screen. Okay, you can read it. Eliah, I'm going to have you read. Zechariah chapter 4, and let's start at... Read one through three. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go on and start here. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is waking out of his sleep and said unto me, what seest thou? And I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick, all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and his seven lamps thereon and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof. Okay. He said two olive trees. Oh, 
And there's some, these are the two olive trees actually that he's referring to in Revelations. Now, we're going to confirm that. Let's go down to verse 11. And um, Sophia, I'm going to have you read verse 11 through 14. Okay. Uh, Zachariah, you and Zachariah? Uh, actually, I'm going to have Mama, she can go to the next one. Oh, she don't have that. I need to get that. Nicodemus. Nicodemus. I'll have her read that one. No, it's in the room here. Uh -huh. um, Rebecca, come here and go and get the, this book here. Okay, it's a it's in the room here. I'll show you where it's at. <clears throat> okay, um, Sophia, go ahead and read eleven through fourteen. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlesticks and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches which though the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves. And he answered me and said, Knowest thou what these be? And I said, No, my master. And he said, These are the two anointed ones that stand by Yah of, of the whole earth. Okay. Now, there it is. <laughs> He's telling you these are the two anointed ones. So the two olive trees, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That he's talking about, the um, the two witnesses, guess what? They are already with Yah in the Old Testament here. They're already with him. Mm -hmm. So these aren't some people that's going to just get born and all of a sudden just show up and become the two witnesses, right? Mm -hmm. No, they are already with him before. That's why it tells you, he said, these are the two olive trees that stand before Yah. Mm -hmm. It says, what be these two olive branches, which through the golden pipes empty the golden oil out uh, of themselves? Then he answered, said, knowest thou not what these be? And he says, I said, no, no, my master. And he said, these are the two anointed ones that stand by, by Yah of the whole earth. Mm -hmm. That almost quoted the scripture exactly in Revelations there. Mm -hmm. Uh, hold on one second. It's a thin book that's on the side of my chair that's kind of like white with a little blue at the top of it. Kind of thin. Yep, yeah, that's the one. Thank you. Okay. And Mama's going to read this here. So he actually, there was prophecy about the two witnesses coming in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Already prophesied in the Old Testament that they would come. Mm -hmm. You see? Now, Mama, I'm going to have you read. This is the Gospel of Nicodemus. And this is a very interesting book here. Some of y'all may want to get this book. It's called The Lost Books of the Bible. And it's uh, Rutherford H. Platt. But it's thin. It's a pretty nice um, uh, book here. The Book of Nicodemus is in it. Okay. And, Mama, you're going to read. You, you know, oh, it's on, the, it's on the paper there. 20. Right. That's 24. 20. This is 20 right here. Okay. So you're going to start down here and go up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Christ, that one? Yeah. Christ delivers Adam to Michael, the archangel. They meet Enoch and Elijah in heaven, and also the blessed thief who relates how he cares to, to paradise. Then Yah, holding Adam by the hand, delivered him to Michael, the archangel, and he led him into paradise, filled with mercy and glory. And two very ancient men met them and were asked by the saints, who are ye who have not yet been with us in hell and have had your bodies placed in paradise? One of them answering said, I am Enoch, who was translated by the word of Yah. And this man who is with me is Elijah, the Tishbite, who was translated in a fiery chariot. Here we have hitherto Hether been and have not tasted death, but are now ab about to return at the coming of the Antichrist, being armed with divine signs and miracles, to engage him in battle and 
to be slain by him at Jerusalem and to be taken up alive again into the clouds after three days and a half. Okay. Now, isn't that amazing? That's why I say these lost books are really nice to have because they really uh, fits together a lot of the um, missing pieces. Okay. So basically, he's telling you right here that the two that are coming back are Eliah and Enoch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> why is this important that they come back? They, they had to be those two. They actually couldn't have been no one else but those two. I want to say this real quick because there is a teaching that's going forth that the two witnesses are the northern and the um, southern tribes of Israel. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's nothing in Scripture that supports that. <laughs> um, all of the... Um, the, the scriptural text that we're reading supports who it is. That's right. These were two perfect and upright men who didn't even taste of death. They were translated right to the kingdom, you see. Now, we will be talking about the spirit of Elijah that's coming in the last days, okay? But I want people to understand, we want people to understand that the scripture actually tells you who they are. Yes, right. Enoch and Elijah. And it's not the northern and southern kingdoms. That's right. It's not the northern and southern kingdoms. That's right. So, you know, what's amazing is it, it couldn't have been no one but those two. I'll tell you why it had to be those two. Okay. Well, there's a scripture. Okay. Matter of fact, we're going to go to this scripture here. Um, uh, let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans chapter five. And Rebecca, I'm gonna have you read it. Romans chapter five, and this is verse 12 through 14. And this is gonna open up a little understanding as to why it had to be those two witnesses. Um, <clears throat> these two witnesses, uh, Romans chapter five. Mm -hmm. 12 through 14. Go ahead, Rebecca. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law's sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of mm -hmm. Adam's transgression, who is the figure of, man, of him that had, was to come. Okay, now, why is this so important here? Okay, I want you to understand this, okay? See, according to the scripture, death must pass upon every man. Mm -hmm. But notice he said from Adam to Moses. Why? Because Moses brought the law. Yeah. So he said from Adam to Moses, Enoch was in that period between Adam and Moses, right? Mm -hmm. But Elijah, what? Mm -hmm. But what's the deal with Elijah? Well, think about this. Elijah, too, didn't die. But guess what? He has to die, too. Well, the scripture says that not all shall see death, right? Don't the scripture say that? Yes. Okay. That's referring to after the Mashiach. Mm -hmm. Because when the Mashiach came and he died, the Messiah for some of you, when he died, right, now everyone after the Messiah don't necessarily have to see death. But even though Enoch and Elijah was translated because they were in that period before the Mashiach, they have to taste death. This is why they must be killed. This is why they got to come back, you see, because that has to be fulfilled. See, all scriptures got to be fulfilled. Ain't that what, you, what, what, what Yahushua said? He said, thus be it so. That we must fulfill all scriptures. What we gotta fulfill the scriptures of being of you being baptized? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's something he said that we gotta fulfill all righteousness. Mm -hmm. You see? So that's what we gotta keep in mind here, what's going on. So Enoch and Elijah had to come back. They have to be uh put to death. As you see, they're gonna come back to life and be caught up to the father. You see, mm -hmm. so this I hope this cleared up a lot of the confusion as to the two witnesses and who they are and and why is it. Um, and think about those two. Those two. I mean, the book of Enoch tells you a little bit about Enoch. Enoch was a very powerful man. I'm blessed in the Most High. I mean, he was blessed like Elijah. You saw the miracles that Elijah did. Yes. You see, mm 
-hmm. And so these two are very righteous men. And the most high, uh, he esteemed them so highly until he gave them a translation before the time. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Yes. That's how blessed they were. So he said, yeah, you two, you two can go back. I'm going to take you from the, from the earth now because I need you in the last days. So come hang out with me for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I yeah. love you two so much. Come hang out with me for a while. You know, because I can't let you just stay on earth for, um, you know, a, a two, three thousand years. Man, people be looking around like, man, you ain't, the guys ain't died yet. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, then they, and then they cut, start getting older and older, too. I mean, how old are they? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so the most I said, you know, I'm going to have to take you two out of, here. out of here for now because I need you in the last days. Yeah, I have a work for you. That's if, right. If you, if you look at a lot of Elijah's work back during that time, it's going to be replicated today. That's right. A lot of the things that he was doing back then are going to be done in today's time. In That's, the right. Time. That's right. That's right. Another thing, too, keep in mind, Elisha, and we said this before, he asked for a double portion That's of right. Elias' spirit. That's or right. Ruach. And he got it, too. Yes. And I think we should all be asking for a double portion, too, because Most High did say that he was going to send the spirit of Elisha in the last days. That's right. So even though you have the two witnesses that are going to be doing all of this <laughs> calamity or causing all this That's calamity right. up on the earth, we too can ask for a double or double triple portion, portion That's right. of Elisha's spirit so that we can speak the word. Because notice the scripture says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Yeah. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. We should ask the Most High for that um, gift so that we can speak his word to That's bring right. about judgment That's upon right. our enemies and upon those that dwell upon the earth that have refused to repent from the, for the evil that they've done. That's right. If we ask for that, we meditate upon that, upon the promises of his word and what we know we have access to, we can be very powerful yet again as a people. That's right. But what we need to do is end all of the chaos amongst ourselves so that we can concentrate on these things so that our vessels, our bodies can be used at the most high. That's right. That's right. I like that. Ask for a double portion. You mm -hmm. hear that? We need to be like, like Elisha. He asked for a double portion. Mm -hmm. You know, and Elijah told him, he said, he said, if, if you see me uh, taken away from here, you'll get it. Mm -hmm. So when he was able to see it, mm -hmm. he knew, oh, I have it. Yeah. But guess what he did, though? He had he took Elijah's mantle because his mantle was left, which is his cloak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> his cloak was left. And he took a cloak. Then he slapped the water. I think he slapped the water with the cloak. And he, he said, where is the Elohim of, Eli of, of Elisha, of Elijah, right? And he smoked the water, and the water departed, and he was able to walk through on dry ground. Mm -hmm. So it, right away, the power show came forth. Mm -hmm. Man, wow. he took the mantle and hit the wall. Wow. You see, we don't, we don't, the, the people today, that's why I, I have a cloak, you know, mm -hmm. because people today, we are so um, mm -hmm. modern, mm -hmm. and no one understands that when you see them, what they gonna have on? Sackcloth. Yes. They ain't gonna be in priestly robes or nothing. They gonna, they gonna be dressed like, like this. Power they gonna, Rangers. They, that's right. <laughs> they gonna be dressed like this. They gonna have, they gonna be they in sackcloth and stuff. They're gonna be ready to, to see all of this stuff come down. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. now that's amazing when you think about it. And it, it, it kind of makes me think about this too, how we see all the power that um, have been displayed in days gone by. Right. But the enemy has our people so focused on nonsense and the cares of this life to we can't even reconnect. That's right. It seems like we're unable to connect to that power because we're focusing on things that don't even matter. Don't even matter. But That's the Most High right. is telling us it's time for us to wake up, get your eyes open, and see what is about to take place in this earth because the Most High is about to smite this earth through the words of his prophets. That's right, he sure is. And through the words of his children, he's about to smite the earth. That's how right. can how can we be a part of that if we don't even understand and realize that we have this power? That's right, that's right. Uh, go to uh, Malachi, because this, this is gonna confirm back what my wife was saying about uh, Elijah coming in the last days, and we should ask for that devil portion so that we can have the power to do, and get this here. When Elijah was on the earth, okay, and in, in the days of Jezebel, it took him, him and Yahoo had to deal with, or Yahoo 
he had to deal with um, Jezebel and her and Ahab and their wicked prophets. Mm -hmm. You see, it, it takes the spirit. Of, look what you see today. Yeah. You see the spirit of Jezebel running rapid, right, in the world, right, mm -hmm. in all the religions. I'm talking about from Christianity to Buddhism to Hebrew Israelitism, That's okay? Right. The Je spirit of Jezebel, and we ain't talking about no woman, okay? Get that, y'all get it. Look at the, at the spirit of Jezebel um, um, documentary, not documentary, um, video series, series yes. that we did, right? The sp this spirit of Jezebel deals in doctrines, false doctrines. And so this, this, this spirit, it takes the spirit of Elijah because the spirit of Elijah is going to come with power and demonstration of the Ruach. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. You see, when all the other ones won't have that power, you won't see that power. But with the spirit of, of, of Elijah, you're going to see the power. You're going to see the power like you see in the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. You're going to see the power. That's right. One thing I wanted to mention, too, do you notice the correlation between the spirit of um, Elijah returning and all this other stuff? You just mentioned Ahab and Jezebel, right? Yeah. Elijah or Elijah was sent to deal with them, right? Yeah. Now, notice everybody's been talking about the temples of Baal that are going up. Mm -hmm. What was going on during that time? That's right. Ahab was causing the children of uh, Israel to, to worship these false gods. And all of that kind of stuff back during that time. That's so right. the same thing is happening today, where they're they're starting to erect these temples all That's over, right. all again. over, yeah, all over again. These these temples are going up, and our people again are not focused on these things that are just unfolding right before our yeah. eyes, like the River Euphrates drying up. All this stuff was talked about, stuff, yeah, and it's it's unfolding right before our eyes. But where are we? Where are our minds fixed? That's right. Our minds are fixed on things that don't even matter. Yeah. There are there is some serious calamity about to unfold on this planet. Yeah. And we need to align ourselves spiritually with the word so that we can be ready. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, we need to be ready, you know, because whether the earth is round or flat, guess what? Judgment still going to hit this earth. Yes. This earth can be square. Mm -hmm. It could be a, a diamond shape or whatever. Trust me on that judgment still coming. Yes. So we got to be ready. Yes. We got to be ready for what's about to happen. Because like my wife said, they putting up these these um, um, temples, uh, uh, almost like uh, yeah, temples of Baal all over the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is creepy when you think about yeah. it. You know, they got that kind of money to put these things. And I'll tell you, there's some things going on. This new one that I'm going to be doing. I got some things on my mind that the most I've put on my heart and have shown me what these wicked, wicked demons are trying to do. Mm -hmm. Okay what they want to do okay and it, it's kind of creepy mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of creepy but we're going to put together uh white it out six we're going to start it's actually going to be a mini series mm -hmm. and it's going to deal with uh some of the book of enoch things and fallen angels and just a bunch of little different things you know but it's 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 some things in the working you know mm -hmm. um but let's go to malachi here and look at this real quick it's malachi chapter four and before i'm gonna have you read it chapter four verse five Okay, and it says, "Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in your Lord." Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in Psalms. <laughs> Bear with me one moment. The tabs. There's Malachi right there. <laughs> there got to be what a hundred or more tabs in, in this Bible. Okay. Behold, I will send you Eliahu the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Yahuwah. Okay, and he six. shall turn the hearts of the father back to the children and the hearts of the children back to the father, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now, if you notice, they put the plural there. Yeah. They said the heart of the fathers back to the children and the hearts of the children back to the fathers. That's right. Actually, it's not supposed to be um, uh, with an S. I researched that before and what the most I was talking about, he was talking about, if you know, in, in the story of Elijah, when he was dealing with the um, the false prophets and he had them killed and he, he actually made the statement. It was like uh, now that the, the, um, the children of Israel's heart can be turned back to the father. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because they were their hearts had turned toward these false prophets and toward mm -hmm. the temples of the, 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 the gods of Baal. Mm -hmm. You see, 
And so that's what this was actually uh, referring to. You see how adding the S to both of those fathers changes the whole meaning. Yeah. And so there are even Christian songs where they're saying that the Most High is going to turn the heart of like the natural daddies back to their children yeah. and the children back to the hearts of their daddies. You know, it makes you think of earthly dads or That's earthly right. fathers. Well, it, ha it has nothing to do with that. It's actually speaking of the, mo the Most High saying, look, I will yet choose Israel and put them back in their land. And my people are going to actually turn back to me. That's so right. that it gives it a whole different meaning. That's why you have to beware of the leaven. Beware of the leaven and always look for it so that the most high can give you a better understanding when things have gone out of um out of sync with the real interpretation. That's right. So now you know, so you know, it's kind of amazing when you really look at how the scriptures is just telling you these prophecies about how Elijah is gonna come in the last days and, and he's actually is gonna come. But, but the spirit of Elijah would come also. And that's why he, he told them, he said, if you will believe it, this is Elijah. He's talking about John the Baptist. He said, if you will believe me, this is really Elijah. He's referring to the spirit of Elijah that had come upon John the Baptist. You see? <laughs> so even back then, he was dispersing the spirit of Elijah that's to right. some of his people. That's right. <laughs> you see? That's right. So that's what we should be praying for. We should pray for that the Most High give us a double portion of Elijah's spirit, mm -hmm. you know, and this spirit is different than the Ruach. Mm -hmm. You don't get them confused. This is a different spirit than the Ruach. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like when the scripture said Caleb had another spirit. Mm -hmm. In other words, he had a different spirit than those, the other um, 10 spies that went up and spied the land. They had a, a, a scared spirit. They were afraid. They were, uh, oh man, they're like giants, you know? Caleb, even though he was small and they were real tall giants that he saw, he's like, we still able to conquer. I don't care how big you are. You bigger than they are, how do they fall? <laughs> That's probably how he was thinking, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And Caleb was like, the scripture said Caleb had another spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. A person's spirit um, can have a certain spirit about them. Mm -hmm. uh, some people can be very aggressive. Mm -hmm. You know, some people can have a strong spirit. Some people can have a weak spirit. Okay. Mm -hmm. A person is that a person that's strong can get around a weak person, or a weak person get around a strong person, and that spirit can rub off on. Them, mm -hmm. You see, people can have a spirit of boldness. There you go. That's right. And a spirit of meekness. That's right. <laughs> so yeah. That's what that's what it means. So Elijah had a certain spirit. Mm -hmm. You see, and that spirit that he had, the scriptures tell us that we could. We can have a double portion of that spirit also. Yes, if Elisha asked for a double portion of it, we can too. Yeah, we can too. Because the most high did say the spirit of Elisha or the spirit of Elijah or Elijah is going to come in the last That's days. Right. So. That's right. So hallelujah. Now, um, let's go to because this, this is dealing with the end times. He's talking about how these two are gonna um back to revelations. Um, how these two are going to um speak these things and the plagues are going to fall now let's go back to mm -hmm. that chapter 11. Revelation. yeah revelations chapter 11. okay now <clears throat> i want to look at something here mm -hmm. okay it said verse six is that these have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. So now, wow, did you hear that? Mm -hmm. The days of their prophecy is what? Three and a half years. Mm -hmm. So they may shut heaven for three and a half years mm -hmm. of no rain. Now, don't that sound, see what I mean? It, it sounds in accordance to the droughts. The scripture talks about droughts coming. That's right. You see? So what in the world is this planet going to do without any rain? Because gonna, they're going to probably have it um, where it's going to be drought everywhere. Mm -hmm. Maybe not, maybe maybe in y'all's area, because they're they going to know who we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trust me on it. These two witnesses know who we are. Mm -hmm. They know we're the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and what they what they coming to do is the same thing. They want to turn the heart of the children back to our Father Elohim. So now, 
at the time that these plagues and everything are coming down, you see, so that's one plague in itself when you think about the drought. I want now to share we, a dream real quick. Mm -hmm. um, I had this dream years ago, but I think it was during the time where we were having a drought here. Mm -hmm. Okay. In this dream, um, I saw that the rain started to fall on our land. It was it was still dry around, mm -hmm. but it was still falling on our land, although everybody else wasn't experiencing that rain. And you could see the sunshine in the distance, but it was pouring down rain over all, over our land itself. Right. And so it kind of makes me wonder if the Most High is going to deliver his children, wherever we may be during those times, to where even though other people are going to be experiencing um certain things he will still allow us to be blessed that's right because he's not going to punish us with the wicked if we're walking according to his will that's right you see and it kind of reminds me of too it says when i see the blood i will pass over so all those plagues that are hitting everybody else if he sees the blood applied to our lives he's going to pass over us that's right and be able to plague the enemies that are around us that's right so we got to make sure the blood is applied to our lives properly and that's why I kind of feel sorry for a lot of the brothers and sisters who have chosen the route of not believing in the Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach. That's right. A lot of people, I mean, we just got a long message uh, yesterday from someone who just believes that all of this stuff is just wickedness and this devilish. And I believe we need to get an understanding, people. Don't just cut all of this off. If you don't have nothing else that's going to atone for your sins, what are you going to do? It's a dangerous time right now to be cutting off your redemption or cutting off the blood that can be applied to your life because you will be plagued and judged with the rest of the world if you that's don't right. have the blood applied to your life. That's right. You know, that that's that's amazing. Um, I'm going to show you something here. I'm trying to find this passage. Um, oh, it's an ass. That's why I couldn't find it. <laughs> oh, well, these searches on, the, on here are... You don't get them exact. They won't bring it up. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Let's look at. Let's go to First Kings. I want you to see something here. First Kings. Okay, chapter seventeen. <clears throat> and I'm gonna start at verse one. I want you to think about this thing because this this is really um, um, amazing here, right? Now, Elijah. Okay, let me go back. Okay, yeah, this is it, chapter seventeen. Now, now listen to this real carefully here, right? Now, uh, verse one, Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead said unto Ahab, as, as Yah, thy Elohim of Israel, liveth before whom I stand, there shall no dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Mm. Okay. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Ahab. What you going to do, man? You just shut up to heaven from you, too. You mean, um... Elijah. Yeah, Elijah. That's what I mean. What you gonna do, Elijah? You just shut up the not only for for Ahab and for the kingdom of Israel and everywhere else. You just shut it up for your own self. So what are you gonna do then? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Think about that. Let's yeah. keep reading. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Verse two. It says, "And the word of Yah came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith." that is before the Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Mm. So he had. <laughs> now, now, Elijah, he just spoke. He, he, he probably wouldn't even thinking about, what am I gonna do? Wait a minute, I'm just. <laughs> but the most high, because he put it in Elijah's heart to, to speak in his will, the prophecy, and the most I said, okay, let me tell him what he needs to do now to survive, because he just shut up the heavens. So I can't, I can't let his word fall, right? Mm -hmm. So I got to tell him what to do. <laughs> yeah. So the most I told him where to go and get water. Mm -hmm. Are you? Don't you know the word says what? 
It says that everyone that have an ear to hear what the Spirit yes, is saying, what the yes. Ruach is saying. Yes, so yes. in these times, we got to be wise enough to hear the word of yes. Yahuwah and yes. to hear, hear his word and know what to do in these times. Instead of just acting and just, oh, I'm going to run over here. Did, what, did, did the lion, did he just sit there and say, oh, you know what? Oh, man, uh, let, let me go. I'm uh, digging some water over here. Uh, let me go find some water real quick. I just shut up there. He didn't do none of that. Did it? He waited and he heard the word of the Father. Yes. This is what we got to learn to do. We got to learn to hear his voice. And so he went there. So in this time, this, what you're seeing here is almost a foreshadow of what's to come. Yes. So even though in, in Revelations, where it talked about that they're going to shut up the heaven of rain. Trust me, the Most High gonna have some spots for His people, yes. and if He have to send ravens to feed His His people, then He will. Mm -hmm. Okay, He will send. He got a way for His people. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? Don't yes. that give you? Don't that make you feel a little better? Yes. That you know Hallelujah. that even though this stuff is gonna happen, that the Most High is gonna make a way for His people. He ain't gonna let no judgment come upon you if you if you living if you. Living according to his word and walking in his word and walking in the spirit you feel with his ruach, mm -hmm. huh? That that would be a can you imagine, right? A, a father that has a child, right? And his child is doing everything right, okay? Doing everything right. And the father decides, you know what? You're doing everything right, son. I'm still gonna whoop you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna still spank you, boy. Wait a minute, Dad. But what for? He said, "I'm. I don't. I'm gonna get you because I gotta get this whole world. And, and I know you doing everything right, but I gotta get you too. Because I'm getting him. I gotta get you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so the most high, he's not like that. He said, "My people, I'm gonna make a way for them. Mm -hmm. You see. So I want y'all to think about that. You see. Now, uh, back to Revelations again. Now, let's go back there. Revelation chapter 11. And let's look at this one more time. Now. Okay, so we know that they're going to shut up. There ain't going to be no rain for three and a half years and have power over the waters to turn them into blood. So no water, period. No rain coming down in the water that's here. He gonna have power to turn them into blood. You see? So now let's say you are a one of y'all's people, right? That's blessed and filled with the ruach, right? And you got yourself a little uh, five acre piece partial land, and you got a nice pond on your land. Do you think the prophet is gonna say? That water into blood. Huh? No. <laughs> of course he's not. You see? And so that's what we gotta think about. We gotta think about who we are and who and their judgment when they speak these things is to hurt the world mm -hmm. and their enemies, mm -hmm. not Yah's people, you see. And so when we keep reading, what else do we have power to do? Turn the water blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. So they literally go ahead, whatever they want, decide they want to do, they can do. Mm -hmm. Wow. You see how much of the Father's will he has entrusted in man mm -hmm. and his people? Mm -hmm. huh? Don't you know his will is going to be carried out through his people? Yes. Wow. That's amazing when you think about it, right? What's amazing, too, is his will is also carried out through people who are not his people. That's right. That's <laughs> think about those that he sent to punish us. That's right. Yeah, you know, think about that. that done, he actually raises up people against us when we go against his will. So That's throughout right. time, the Most High has always used people to carry out his judgments. That's right. Like a game of chess or something. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Game of chess. A checkmate. It's almost almost a checkmate. <laughs> the Most High almost got the world in checkmate, y'all. So, mm -hmm. wow. Hallelujah. Okay, now, let's look at something else. Okay, now, let's keep going in this passage here. Okay, so now... They're going to do this as often as they will. 
And when they shall have finished their testimony, which is at three and a half years, that's when the beast is going to come up. Now, so all these plagues and all this stuff is going to be going down, right? Now, I want you to look at this here. Let's go to Revelation chapter 6. And we're going to look at verse 15. Eli, I'm going to have you read that one. Verse 16 and 15. Verse 6, um, chapter 6, verse 15. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains. Okay, in verse 16 also. 16 and, said, and 17. And said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? Wow. So basically, these now, now there's an alarming number of uh, people building bunkers, and, and you know, they that's what that is. He's talking about they say he hit themselves in the dens as bunkers. Mm -hmm. You know, they dug down these bunkers and everything, and mm -hmm. they, they think that they think that the tsunami gonna save they're they gonna be saved from that tsunami. Or from that earthquake, you know, and no, no, you're not going to be saved at all. You can hide down in your dens, but he's coming to get you down in those dens. That's right. You know, I don't care how many guns you got, you know, try shooting at, shoot, shooting at a tsunami, paying it your way. You know, the guns ain't going to help you. You know, <laughs> try shooting at an earthquake, rock falling, and you just bah, 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 bah. It ain't going to do you no good. Okay? <laughs> Y'all hiding down in your bunkers, get all this ammunition and stuff. Yeah, some of them get stockpiled, stockpiled ammunition like crazy, you know, and the government let them do it, right? Mm -hmm. But you and me, one of us going to try to stockpile some ammunition, go get two boxes of ammunition, of, of, of bullets, and they go, mm -hmm. What do you need 30 FBI, bullets? Um, let's get the FBI on the phone. This guy here, he's trying to purchase 50 bullets, you know? <laughs> they sitting there, got, got a couple of million bullets stored away. You know, most of us should let the room get hot and just let them all just go off on them, you know? Well, you know what's interesting? Those who are <laughs> digging down in the bunkers, too. Yeah. They actually put themselves a little bit closer to hell. Yeah. Because we have to understand. Yeah. <laughs> let that, that ground. The most, the most high can open up the earth and swallow them, just like they did the children of Israel. Yeah. You know, that happened yeah. to us when we was in our mess. That's right. So the same thing can happen to these people as well. That's right. They just dug themselves a little closer. Yeah. Remember the guy, remember the guy that was sleeping in his bed, yes, right? down in Florida. Down in Florida, sleeping in his bed, you know, sleeping good. All of a sudden, the, the floor opened up in his room only. Yes, only in his room. Only in his room and swallowed his bed. He was gone. They say his brother, I think his brother or somebody was in the house with him. We're running and open door to the room is a big hole. And he said they couldn't even see his body. He was gone. Now, you got to ask yourself, what did that particular man, we <laughs> a lot of people on the planet, right? What did that particular man do to make the most high open up the earth under his bed and swallow him? Well, I mean, he never saw. I mean, I couldn't even imagine. He just sleeping all calm. Next thing you know, he just, whoa, just. Man, that got to be horrible. It got to be mind blowing when you think oh, somebody gonna get me out of here and ain't nobody showing up. Especially when you think your bed is is the like safest, the safest most place. place. I mean, you you feel safe enough to go to sleep, right? <laughs> you know what right. I mean? And so, man, that got. I bet, I bet when that was happening to him mm -hmm. and those rocks and stuff was covering him as he was being swallowed dirt. down. Mm -hmm. That had to be mind blowing. So then. You need to take a look at who you're messing with. Yeah. Who are we talking about who's able to do things like that? We're talking about the most high Yah of heaven. That's right. And so all these people messing around thinking that they can somehow um, circumvent the punishment that's coming to them. Yeah. By being full of pride and full of deceit and all this kind of stuff. I think you better start humbling yourself. That's right. It ain't nothing you can do in the hands of an angry Elohim. That's nothing right. Nothing at all. That's right. The only thing you can do is surrender. But unfortunately, for most people, the pride of their heart has to see them. Yeah, have to see them. That's right. Mm -hmm. All that pride, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, I tell you, sometimes we, we used to watch, um, uh, what's the show? Uh, Preppers. What is it? Doomsday Preppers. Doomsday Preppers. And the, well, I would see some of the things. I mean, I was I was sitting there with those scriptures fretting out yourself because of evil doers. <laughs> <laughs> but some of them got so much money and doing they're doing. This ain't their home. 
Mm-hmm. If this is something like a bug out, or what's it called? What's it called? Bug out? It's a bug out, but it's an um, elaborate bug out. <laughs> yeah, so they already got their nice home, and if stuff go crazy, they got some land purchased way out in the woods. It's an underground with home. underground home that's like, it's like, and only they know where it is, and some of them got cameras and stuff. And some of them get uh, ammunition and get all kinds of stuff. Trip wires to... on the land, so if you come on there, you won't get messed up. And... Oh. It's like I'm looking at the doomsday prayer. Stop looking at this stuff. Get mad. Yeah. Like you, you can't even. You can't. Yeah, we have to you save can't even dig it. just to get a little bit of something. Yeah, you, you know? can't even dig a little hole just for yourself. You know. A secure <laughs> hole. Secure <laughs> hole to hug the hand in for yourself. You know, they digging, dig, dig, digging big mansions in the ground. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's stockpiling it with years of food and seeds yeah. and water and air and all kinds of things yeah. on land in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. With cameras and trip wires. Yeah. <laughs> and security and dogs and all kinds of stuff. And you like and you sitting there like saying, you're like, man, we I almost feel like a sitting duck out here, you know? <laughs> you like it took me years and years and years and years and years to save up just for this little bit right here. Yeah. So how much more time is it gonna take me to save up to add to this little bit? Yeah. You know? So you say you say, Father. Yeah. Okay. I gotta remember that scripture in Psalms. That says fret not yourself because of evildoers. Yeah. We got to get our eyes off of them and get our eyes on the word and start having faith in the most high because yeah. it's coming down. They are on a sinking ship right now. They are on the Titanic. Yeah. And so we That's have to right. remember that when we get to looking at what they have so that we can get our eyes on the prize. You know, it's funny too. Um, they said the Titanic was an unseekable um, ship, right? Sure but I is. heard that they didn't let any people of color on that Titanic ship. Oh, thank you for not letting us on. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? A big racist ship. That's, that's amazing. Look, you're going to sell a big racist ship of folk, right? And say that it's unsinkable. Yeah. But you like, forgot who you're dealing it's with. It's almost like the most, I was like, ooh, it was almost like, you know, he says, he's waiting till the grapes get nice and right before he, <laughs> <Yes>. uh, <laughs> before he squish him, you know. I bet he saw that big grape coming up upon the wall. He said, no, I can't resist this one now. I know. I know judgment is is is, is I know I said it's hundred years or more from now, but I gotta hit this I got to right get here, this great they, they ran their mouth <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I tell you it's just amazing, you know, when I look at that, yeah, that Titanic thing was I said, it's something else. Mm-hmm. They want no blacks on there, huh? Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, mm-hmm. another story, I got to say this, and I don't know if you all remember the story from a few months ago, uh-huh. but there was a ship that went down. Remember that ship that went down, and there was a black man. Oh yeah, that's who was right. The only survivor. He found a pocket of air. That's right. Underwater. He showed it. That was amazing. I saw that video. Yeah, everybody else died and perished. Yep, he was a cook on their ship. He was some type of servant. Yeah, on a servant on a ship. That's right. And he was the only survivor on that ship. Wow. Just by a pocket of air. So. This world is like that shit Wasn't he going under down. Three days? He was under there for yes. That's he was right. He was under there for three, three days. days. That's right. He sure There's was. Three days again. That's right. He was under there three days, and he they came were calling him the modern day Jonah. The modern day Jonah. Yeah, that's what they were talking. They were calling him that. The modern day Jonah. Wow. That is an amazing story right there. You see. Wow. Now that goes back to the Gentiles again. This is why we keep saying. If somebody trying to throw you out of lifeline, you better take it and stop, you know, with all that pride. You know, we, we talk about these things quite often because yeah. we get it. Any if you if any of you Gentiles would just read some of the comments under our videos, you would understand why we keep going here. So instead of getting angry at us, why they keep saying that? Why they keep going there? Look at some of the comments that Gentiles leave us. And so this is why we're always talking about their pride. And how they think that there's no judgment slated for them because in their minds we are just you know what what are these negroes whining about now we try to tell y'all the most high is about to set this thing on fire he's already put the wheels in motion and so instead of getting upset about the children of yah talking about the judgment of this earth why don't you take hold of the lifeline Get on the right side of the battle because if you're gonna stay on the side of the battle with your people, you're gonna go down with your yeah, people. That's right. You see, that's, that's just right. another word of caution. That's right. Even to you Israelites, that's a word of caution to you. The most high say anybody who's found joined to them are gonna receive the same punishment. 
And that's something to think about, right? Yeah. Ooh, that's something. I saw that script. I said, okay. All hmm. right. <laughs> okay, Father, I hear you <laughs> loud and clear. Um, I will let nothing separate me from the love of Yah. That's right. And as for me and my house, we will serve Yah. And we that's have right. to serve him, serve him not just with our lips, but in deed. That's right. And in obedience. Whatever his words say, do. Don't fight with him on it. Don't contend with, with him because your arms are too short. To box of the eye. <laughs> <laughs> so just do what he tells you to do and keep it moving. Yeah, keep you it see? moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That story was incredible, though. That you know, I, I take it like sometimes the most high <clears throat> just hear what I'm saying here. He he sees our concerns and he knows that a lot of us know what's about to happen, mm -hmm. and we get afraid. Mm -hmm. Because I, I'm not kidding you. When you see how these people are stockpiling weapons and um, digging bumper bunkers and doing all that stuff, you you feel like, like I said, like you were sitting duck. Mm -hmm. You know, like what I'm the bait. You know, I'm all out here in the open. You know, and so it just makes you feel uh, feel kind of strange. You know, <laughs> yeah. you say, Father, but the most has sometimes he does little things so that our faith can increase. Yeah. Because when I saw that story of that guy and that ship like that, yes, that gave me so, gave much, me so joy, much joy, so much peace to know that this is how the most high gonna do it. Yes, because and if it ain't your time, you ain't got nothing to worry about. That it was that it was so that man's situation was impossible. Yes. It was he was underwater. Mm, mm, mm. The oh, ship yeah. had, had turned over mm, mm, and he was underwater in just one yeah. little air area where he was in the kitchen. And so he had a little food that he grabbed, he had a little air mm. and everything, and the most had kept him. Hallelujah. That was impossible. And then all of a sudden somebody goes down, one of the re, uh, um, uh, dive team. The dive team went down, and they, they said they were reaching into an area, and they a and a hand, hand reached out and grabbed it. Oh, yeah. Somebody allowed Hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 So that story alone, I said, because yes. he wanted us to know that don't worry, even though I'm going to turn this boat over and y'all are on it. Ooh, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to turn this boat over and y'all on it. Don't worry about it, okay? You're going to be all right, okay? I got a lifeline for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Yeah, he does these things. You see, yes. he does that so that our faith can be increased hallelujah. so that we don't be afraid. Yes, you know? hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you, he's good. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. <laughs> he is good. I tell you, he's good. Let's go to Ezekiel now, chapter 7. Hallelujah. In verse Ezekiel, 19. Verse 19. Let's see. Let's give that one to my Okay. Ezekiel seven, seven and nineteen. Oh, okay, I got Ezekiel. Basically, chapter chapter seven, verse nineteen. Okay. Chapter seven. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Their silver into the tree shall they cast, and their gold for throwing away shall serve. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them. In the day of the wrath of Yahweh, their cravings shall they not satisfy, and their belly shall they not fill. For a stumbling block hate that iniquity become. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That, that, that says it all right there. It says, <clears throat> they shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed, and their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of wrath mm -hmm. of, of Yahuwah, and they shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is a stumbling block for their iniquity. Wow. Mm -hmm. See, don't they celebrate all the you know, stockpile and none of that stuff going to help them at all. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Wow. Yes, we just read from Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 19. Hallelujah. Now, there's one more. Let's go to 
So all this had and everybody doing, let's look at verse, uh, chapter four, verse, uh, we have the wrong scripture here. Let me see, because I know Hebrews. Let me go and check this. Hebrews 4.13 is what I is what I got on the sheet here. Let me see. Let's see, 13. Oh, okay, that is it. Okay. <clears throat> it says, neither, this is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. It says, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in the sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So in other words, the most high sees everything. Mm -hmm. So all these people thinking they're getting away with stuff and they hiding and they get creating bunkers. I mean, do you really think I mean you you really think that you can hide from, from our father? You know, you think you can hide anything. Man. Like you said, the pride of your heart have deceived you. Yeah. Wow, I tell you, it's it's just amazing to me that um you know, this I, I see so much going down in these last days, and I know, I know, I get a little nervous too, looking at the news sometimes, hearing this and hearing that. But the Most High, He keeps he showing me that you know, uh, don't be afraid. O Zion, you know? put on thy strength. Yeah, I'll that's what we that. must do in this last day. Yeah, don't let this stuff scare us. Just make cause us to put on our strength. That's and, right. and with that strength, we have to pray fast, whatever it is we have to do to keep ourselves spiritually connected to the Father. That's right. <laughs> yep. Now, Jeremiah, you have that one? Jeremiah 16 and 17. <clears throat> For my eyes are upon all their ways. I'm going to read the verse before that, too. Go ahead. Behold, I will send for many fishers, says Yahuwah, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. For my eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from my eyes. And first, I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double. Because they have defiled my land, they have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. So, in other words, the stuff that they were eating, detestable animals they were sacrificing, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think about that, that is like, that's something. Now, what I notice is here. Uh, let's look at this, what he's talking about here. Okay, let's go to verse 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, say if you say if Yah, that it shall no more be said, um, Yah liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But Yah liveth, that brought up the children of Israel uh, from the land of the north, and from all the lands whether he hath driven them. I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Behold, I will send for many fishes, that's when he goes into that scripture. Isn't that amazing? Yes. He said, I'm going to say many fishes. What are they fishing for? Huh? Behold, I will send many fishers, saith Yah, and they shall fish them. Fish who? What are you talking about? And after I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill, out of the holes and the rocks for my eyes. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. So he said, I'm going to send for many fishes and hunters. They're going to come for all of these, mm -hmm. the wicked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fishes, be able to, and fishes and hunters. Okay. Now, so in other words, they, you see how a fox got a hole. He go hide in this hole trying to get away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fox ain't getting away. He ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. You see, the little fish, he said, fish get the hat trying to get away. He said, no, I'm going to send expert fishers. They're going to be able to snatch you right out that water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see that? And so, because what is he trying to do? He's cleaning and cleansing the earth. Mm -hmm. You see? And he said, even those that had in the holes, he said, and out of the holes of the rocks. Mm -hmm. Right? He says, they shall, notice what it says, they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of rock. All your dens and bunkers. Mm -hmm. He just told you right there. 
And he's going to be hunting them right out of these dens and bunkers. Mm. He's going to have hunters and fishers that's going to come right for them. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why? Why angels? Ain't that yep. something? That's something. So sad they think they can outsmart him. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's easy to have that feeling and that pride when you've been at something for so long. You're like, oh, he got forgotten. Oh, no, I don't think he forgets. remembers. He never forgets. You know? That's right. Who oh, shall bring oh, us see. down to the ground? That's right. You know? That's what the word says, that they are thinking in their minds. <laughs> Who's going right. to bring us down? Ain't nobody did it at all this time. I doubt whether anybody can because he has forgotten. But the most high, he, he says, I'm going to laugh. He said, the day of their judgment is um um in his heart he's thinking about it he's gonna laugh at that's them. right so if y'all gonna be laughing I, I can probably guess that we'll be laughing too you see so that's right it's time to get right people time to get right <laughs> that's right well we're gonna take a moment now and answer some of the questions uh if you all have any questions go ahead and ask, answer uh ask your questions i uh, will take a moment to try to answer some moment. keep it mad it moves really quick so we'll try to answer your question as we see them. <clears throat> I hope this lesson blessed you all, you know, and gave you a little more faith and believing that the most has, has got a way for us. And even though he's going to overturn that ship, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, we, he's going to have a pocket for us. Yes. And we have a part to play too. We got, we have things that we must do yeah. as the children of Yah. We have the things that we must do. We can't forget that. Now imagine this here, right? Mm -hmm. He was a cook for them, right? Mm -hmm. Now I say this cook, instead of being in the kitchen, he went about his work, right? And I say he was up on the deck. I'm gonna go up on the deck for a minute and chill or whatever. Nope. Most I said, no, you be in that kitchen. You get in that kitchen, you do your work there. No you're work. gonna be the servant that they hired you to be. Yeah, and I'm gonna bless you. Mm -hmm. That's something. So you think about that, you know, he was about what he was supposed to have been doing. Okay, for the person who asks, how do we celebrate the Passover? We did a couple of lessons on the Passover. You can go to Washington Reports channel and uh, uh, type in the search on our channel, and you can see the lessons there um, on how how we deal with Passover. Everyone does it differently. We just did a recent lesson um, <clears throat> where the Most High actually was telling us um, that we ain't gonna be able to get it right, you know, especially because things have been switched around so much, but. Uh, what we do is we observe our feast days um, as best as we can. But when you look at the lessons, it'll actually show you that um, aspects of the feast cannot be kept outside of Jerusalem. But um, it's okay to observe them. Um, but trying to keep them according to the law, you can't do that. <laughs> so. Right, exactly. Okay, now someone asked a question here. Uh, oh, it's not a question there. Is it in the scriptures that we have to go to church? Um, the scripture only talks about it's, it mentions um, not to forsake uh, the assembly, okay, of ourselves together, pretty much. Um, now you have to say, okay, what's what's in that assembly? <laughs> what are they preaching and teaching? Because there's all types of assemblies, right? Uh, there's a church of Satan out there, right? There are false prophet churches out there, right? So. When we, when we, when the scripture tells you don't forsake, it's talking about don't forsake a righteous assembly. So if there's a righteous assembly of people that are teaching the truth, right, and they understand who we are as a people, and you are positive that the ruach is there, the ruach is in the people, then then you shouldn't forsake that assembly. Okay. Or, or even if they're just gathering for fellowship. Yeah, if they're just gathering for shell fellowship, don't forsake it. Of course. But if they don't know the truth, they sit there got, got a, 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 a image of Cesare Borgia on the wall posing as the G Jesus and Christ, you know, and they, they into all of that stuff, then, then you need to get up out of there. You know, they, they just, also need to keep in mind, too, that the scripture says, where two or more are gathered together in my name. Yeah. Because a lot of people find themselves not being able to find any assembly. So I don't want you to feel bound by yeah. that scripture. That, that wasn't a law or commandment that's you're going to go to hell if you don't do it. Yeah. And a lot of churches try to bind you to that. Like if you forsake the assembly, right. I remember when we first stopped visiting some of the churches around here, um, that came up, you know, as if we don't, if we don't come to your assembly that, that we're going to automatically go to hell. They try to put that, right. that heavy weight on people to have them believing that. 
But that's not what it is at all. That's right. But the Most High is basically telling us to to assemble together, and and it doesn't me, even mean on a weekly basis. You see how they have their weekly ritual that they do. You don't have to do it like these churches do, where they have their little uh, church services and. And the Most High ain't getting the glory in most of that, so definitely not an assembly like that. Right. But again, where two or more to get, are gathered together in my name, there will I be in the midst. You will be in the midst. That's right. That's right. Here's a question here. It said, um, um, "How can I know the difference between Yah speaking to me or just or me just hearing my own thoughts?" Okay. Well, um, that's something you're gonna you're gonna have to learn. Okay. Knowing Yah's voice. You have to when you when you spend time seeking the Most High and praying, and after you praying, you're 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 listening for Him to speak. Eventually, it, it comes through experience. You'll know His voice when you hear it. Okay, but that comes through experience. You know, it doesn't happen right away. Okay, it takes years sometimes. But you know, the Most High is He He wants you to hear His voice. Sometimes there are things we're doing that can interfere. I recommend people all the time, hey, go on a fast. Because after I went on, sometimes I go on a fast. I'll go on a fast, and right away I can hear his voice even more clear when I go on a fast. You know, so I would say that, um, you know, that's something that, that takes a little time. Just continue to pray and seek him and keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Eventually, you hear him say something. He'll speak to you. You say, "Huh, man, I heard him speak to me." And it'll be it'll be amazing, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought you said. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Somebody says, well, "How many years is the tribulation?" Okay, that's a good question there. Okay, um, there are some passages where it, it talks about three and a half years. Most times it talks about three and a half years, but the problem is, it talks about different things going on in these three and a half years, almost as if there's two periods of three and a half years. That's why people are saying that there's seven years tribulation. Some are saying there's three years tribulation. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that it's seven. Okay, the reason why I believe it's seven is because of Revelation chapter 12. It talks about two periods of time. One of those periods of time is described in, in, in days as three and a half years. In the other period of time, it doesn't describe it as days. It calls it time, times, and a half a time or something like that is what it calls it. To me, that sounds like two different periods because it also mentions the same thing in Daniel. And, it, and, and in Revelation chapter 12, you could tell it's two different times that it's talking, the, to the, the to three and a half years, and then it says time, times, and a half a time. Half a time, you know what I'm saying? Two and a half. So three and a half, I mean, so it makes you, that's why I believe it's personally seven years. But I know that a lot of Christians believe that too. So that's why I'm not I'm not closed-minded on whether it's just three and a half years or seven years. It may be more than that. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. <clears throat> someone asked, um, can Gentiles um <clears throat> receive the spirit of Elisha? Well, um, all I can offer is an opinion on that, and, I, and my husband, I don't know what he knows about it. But <laughs> one thing that I would say as far as Gentiles, we, we've seen in times past where the Most High would give dreams to Gentiles. Look at the Pharaoh, how he had the dreams, right? And he had to ask for the, interpre the interpretation of those dreams. Now, he did get that from an Israelite, which is Joseph, right? But nonetheless, he had the dreams. The Most High revealed to the Pharaoh what was going to take place in the land, but he didn't know what it meant. You see, so the Most High had to send one of his children to explain that dream to him. What else? Was that Nebuchadnezzar? Nebuchadnezzar as well. That's right, yeah. So now as far as the spirit of Elisha, it's kind of hard to say whether or not they can receive that. I can only say that the Most High has dealt with Gentiles back in the day as it relates to revealing things to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> I think that um you know um 
I, I I honestly don't know, you know, uh, if they can receive the spirit. I think that the spirit of Elijah is um a person got a really a person probably well they don't necessarily have to have a ruach either, you know, because Elijah he didn't he wasn't filled with the ruach as in as in what the Book of Acts is talking about. Mm -hmm. This is being filled with the ruach. Okay, the ruach was upon him though, you know, but he wasn't the indwelling of the Ruach or of the spirit. Um, it's hard to say, you mm -hmm. know, it's really hard to say. Um, there's no no scriptures that I can think of that will show. I mean, scripture, he does, it doesn't really um, cover too much dealings with Gentiles and in terms of how they and in terms of them serving the father and, and being with the father, you know, so it's, it's just hard to say, you know, it's, that that will never be some research, I guess, you know. I see a lot of Gentiles that do videos on end time prophecy and stuff like that. So we don't want to confuse that because many of them, um, they're just looking at the scriptures like we do. And they're just kind of um, rehashing what the scripture says as it relates to end time prophecy. But if you were to ask some of them who the Israelites are, and if they think they're um, so-called Negroes or the people who are shipping the stuff, that's then they just go off on a whole nother left field on you. Yeah. And um, some of them even cussing you out and, and saying that's an abomination to even think that, you yeah. know. So I doubt whether that's the spirit of Elijah. These are just people who have studied the scripture. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And just know some of the things that we've all read about. So yeah. it's, it's really, like we said, it's kind of hard to say. So we will just move on to the next spirit, question. The spirit of Elijah is going to come with power. <laughs> yes. Um, I gotta, yeah, it's not just words. Exactly. Yeah, it's that gonna come with power. So if you can't just be a teacher, absolutely. Um, the there guy, you go. This guy asked a question. He said about the um, the seven years and the uh, time of Jacob's trouble. I used to believe they were the same because that's Christian teaching. They teach that Jacob's trouble and seven and a half years are the same. But I no longer believe that because time of Jacob's trouble. Well, think about Jacob's trouble. He's been going on the <laughs> Jacob, I mean, we got four hundred years. We've been going through Jacob's trouble, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, um, right. And right. you mean tell me it's going to get worse then? If this ain't Jacob's trouble, and this Jacob's trouble is coming up, then I'm like, oh, well, well, man, you know? <laughs> you know, that's enough to make a brother want to just, just, oh, forget it. You know, I'm not that I would do that. But it just makes a person just say, oh, man, y'all, we, if, if, it's, if it's more coming, which I do believe is going to be some tribulations because we know. The scripture talked about Yah's people being slain. Well, you got to know, think yeah. about this too. During um, the Jim Crow era, j during the slavery period, yeah. imagine what our people felt like back then. You, you have to know that they thought that was Jacob's trouble too. Yeah. So that's why we say it's a long period. Yeah. Those who had to be uh, bombed out of their houses. You Imagine you're sitting in your house, just minding your own business, eating dinner with your wife and your children, then all of a sudden a smoke bomb comes into the house or yeah, a fire bomb, fire bomb or something. and you have an angry crowd of white men telling you, get out here, Negro. Yeah. And then when you get out there, you see a cross burning in the yard and everybody with their guns yeah. fixed on you. Yeah. You, you mean to tell me you don't think that's Jacob's trouble? Yeah, that's Jacob's trouble there. What about the people in Oklahoma? Mm -hmm during um black the wall the black wall street incident yeah do you think they didn't feel like that was jacob's trouble look yeah. at all these other things rosewood and all these other the, the bloody summer whatever they call that where you know they these people were just killing us all around the country yeah red summer i believe they called it do you think they believe that was jacob's trouble so this is what we mean jacob's trouble has been going on for a long time i believe jake like uh, somebody said we're at the end of jake's that's what i believe i believe yes. we're at the end of jacob's yes. trouble but the the seven and a half years the seven years or the tribulation period that's is, the world's trouble is at the end it's probably at the end of jacob's trouble it's mm -hmm. probably like a part of jacob's trouble but like jacob's trouble may be 500 years a thousand years or whatever but the the tribulation is a part of the end of Jacob's trouble yes, is what yes. I believe, you know. Okay, to um, the young lady rewrite my lyrics. When is Whited Out Three coming out? That's a <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, actually, <laughs> is actually uploading right now as we speak. 
but it's set to private because we have to make sure we have to go watch it first. We usually like to watch it as a family to make sure we didn't have any errors in it. And um, if after we watch it, there's no errors, we'll take it off of private. Right. And then you'll be able to watch it today. Hopefully. Hopefully. Hopefully today. We try to watch it beforehand, but sometimes it's kind of hard because we don't have the best computers in terms of RAM and stuff like that to be able to see it without buffering and all yeah. of this. So we, we did it last night in terms of um, rendering it and getting it ready for upload. So after we watch it, if, it's, if all is well, if there's only like one or two errors, we'll just let it fly. Yeah. We do that sometimes. See, like, ah, I forget that one. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so hopefully this evening. <clears throat> so we thank everybody who participated in this project um, and helping us bring it together with your interviews, your music, your spoken word, Todaya, for this. Um, we've seen a lot of people who have been blessed by this. And uh, we feel like this is just the beginning. As our people that are lost in Christianity and all these other religions begin to see this and begin to understand why certain things have befallen us, hopefully there will be a mass repentance because the scripture also talked about that. And so all of us have to do our part and labor in the vineyard to make sure that we are a light that's shining in the midst of this darkness so that our people yeah. everywhere can wake up. And sometimes we've got to be a little patient with our family you know, sometimes they'll look upon us and they think you're crazy for a minute or two or a couple of years or three or four years. But then after a while, they begin to say, I think it's something to what they're saying. Yeah. So let's just hope and pray for that. Don't browbeat anyone with the word. OK, yeah. just right, let your just let your life I'm be sad. that example. Yeah. Let your life be the proof that they need to see that this thing yeah. is real. Exactly. Exactly. OK, let's see. The UFO sightings. <laughs> um, I, we, 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 this next white it out that we're going to be working on is going to cover a lot of this weird stuff that's going on because we attribute it to the fall and, and some of the stuff that's going on. We're gonna we're gonna talk about a lot of that in that in that uh, mini series. The mini series is basically going to be uh, white it outs, but they're going to be broken down to probably thirty minutes. Um, to 40 minutes, 45 minutes maybe, uh, really short. They're going to be a lot shorter, and they're going to be more impactful and more information, just not as long. So be yeah, ready like for a, Yeah, just like a mini series so we can get them done quicker instead of taking yeah. a year or two to get one done. <laughs> we'll just yeah. break it up and say, okay, here's a 30-minute segment on this, and we will just release it like that, you know, so that we can keep the information um coming faster, a lot faster. And yes, the brother did make a correction. It is actually uh, whited out part five, the curse of generational curses, part yeah, three. That's right. It's part three of the curse of the curse of generational curses. That's right. Okay. Planet X and all, yeah, all of that stuff. There's a lot of different things. I'm, I'm, we're going to talk about a lot of those different things in this new whited out series we're going to be doing. Anyone who has any scriptures or video clips they want to send us, we're going to be dealing with a, a lot of the stuff, dealing with fallen angels and um, the book of Enoch and all this weird, strange stuff we see happening in the world. Yeah. This is what we're going to be covering in this part six mini series. OK, we don't know how, lo how long um, part six is going to go. But we're going to be covering a lot of those type of things. That <laughs> yeah, might go a while because we got a this, lot to cover. Yeah, we got a, a lot, lot to cover. This, this may be an ongoing one, though. I'm yeah. thinking why that part six will be an ongoing mini series, mm -hmm. and part seven will probably be an ongoing one too. Not part seven. Why? Yeah, why out seven? We don't even want to talk about why that yeah. part seven yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do a little bit because why out seven? If we said it was going to be. Um, um, Sage Musical Prophets. I know a lot of people ask about that. When will we get okay. started on that one? Yes. I'm going to do that as a mini series too. Yes, yes. I had to, you know, it's perfect that we came with the mini series. You know why? Because when I was trying to work on some of the information from it was so much, so it was so much, over, yes. overwhelming. Just on one of the musical prophets alone, I was saying, man, I almost need to do one just on this person. Right. And then another one on this one. And it's so breaking it up like that makes more makes sense. more sense. Yeah. That's right. Because we'll be forever making um white it out six as part one, two, and three. That's and, right. And part one, two, and three for part seven. All of yeah. it. We'll forever doing that. Yeah, because so, a mini series makes more right. sense. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. <sighs> Brother um, Ajabab, if you can give us a link to that person, you said ask this person about aliens. If you can give us a link to that person, that would be great. Because he says that he has a lot of information about this kind of stuff. So that would be great if you can maybe drop a link to that person. Yeah, Brother Lee uh, gave me some uh, good information, too. I got I to gotta check that uh, information that he gave me. Okay. That's pretty good. He gave me some links. Okay, Brother uh, uh, Tough Guy. One Tough Guy says the spirit of Elijah. And we, we kind of, we were leaning towards that, too. But the spirit of Elijah is only for the Israelites, as is the covenants. Yeah. And so he has some scriptures here too. Good. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah. So we were kind of leaning towards that. Yeah, too we were too. Yeah. Because you know we've never seen anything the Most High would actually put you know those kind of things in. I mean, dreams is one thing, but they still had to come to the Israelites for the interpretation. Mm -hmm. As we brought out, a wicked person can have a righteous dream. Right. You know. Or a dream that's um. Yeah. Meant to bring information, but as far as the Most High. Now that's not for nobody to feel deal. I mean, left out. It is what it is. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I would still just say align yourself. Scripture says, grab hold of the covenant. You know what I'm saying? Even though the covenant was made for Israel only, remember this. We and we were going to do a lesson on this too, where a covenant is just an agreement. Okay, if just say for instance, I bought a house from someone, and there was a an agreement made between me and that person. If I decide that I'm going to um, I'll use a lease instead. There's called something called subleasing, where if you lease something from a person or a leasing company, you lease it from them, but you sublease it to someone else, right? That sublease was never made with the original leaser. You see, so that per that um, sub that person who sublets never had a contract with the first person. They had it with um, they just grabbed hold of the covenant or the lease. They said, okay, I'll take over the lease from here. You see, but there was never an, a contract made between that person and the original leaseor, and so that's kind of how it is with the with the Gentiles. The Most High never made a covenant with them, but He said, "Okay, I'll allow you to grab hold yeah. of the covenant and do the things uh, or the the terms that are defined within this lease or this covenant. Right. You can do the co the terms according to that, but there was never um, a covenant or an agreement made with them." Right. Right. Now someone says, do you all have the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And um, I'm not ashamed to say that. We've yeah. talked about this before. Um, a lot of Israelites don't agree with it. They they think it's um, something else. Yeah. Um, but yes, we do have the Ruach HaKadosh and we do speak in tongues. That's a gift. That's a gift that the scripture actually talks about. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame in it. And I would say to anyone, just get an understanding on it before. We did um, lessons on it too. Yes, yeah. before rejecting it. The scripture says, um, he that speaketh, there's there's more than one tongue, okay? There are tongues of men and of angels. Which language? Language, language of men right. and language of angels, that's right. Now, some people have the gift of tongues to where, and we've, uh, we've heard of this and we've seen it before, where a person who may not speak a particular language, say, say um, I'm just gonna say French, Okay, they would begin to speak in this tongue for whatever reason, and they've never known that language. Um, our former pastor, when he went to um, Africa, I believe it was, yeah. and all these people spoke many different languages, all of these people heard him in their own language, kind of like it was in the book of Acts. That's right. Right? So we do believe that there are people who the Most High will endow with tongues. Even in the book of Acts, it talked about that, how everybody that stood around heard them in their own language. You know, it's amazing. But then, okay, but then we have to remember too, the scripture also says, he that speaketh in an unknown no. tongue means, speaketh not unto men, but unto Yah, for in the spirit they speak mysteries. Now notice it says, now if you change that word, he that speaketh in an unknown language. Yes. Woo, you hear yes. that? Mm -hmm. That means this is a language that nobody on earth knows this language. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Yes. <laughs> Because we speak not unto men, That's but right. unto Yah, because you speak mysteries in the spirit. That's right. So um, a lot of people have experienced that gift. Okay. Yeah. And remember this too. Gifts and callings come without repentance. <laughs> yeah. So it don't make you nothing special because you have a gift. That's right. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, it's amazing. You know, it's amazing. My ex pastor, he actually went to Jerusalem and to the Wailing Wall. Yes, yes. And when he was at the Wailing Wall praying, he started speaking in tongues and he didn't realize he was speaking in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And some rabbis came around him and they were like, Look at him, like, like, how is he speaking? Well, where did you learn this language? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and they wanted to meet with him because they were shocked at him speaking in in Hebrew so fluently like that mm -hmm. at the wall while praying. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, any more questions? What do you say? How uh, and did fall backwards? I don't know what they're asking there. Okay, this person um, makes a statement that they don't believe that the devil understands the tongues, but their pastor believes he does. Um, I agree with that statement. I don't believe, I don't believe that either. Satan or his demons or minions yeah. understand the unknown tongue at all. Yeah. And sometimes out of um, you know misunderstandings, pastors teach and say things yeah but this is why the scripture said we speak mysteries and sometimes we you have to speak and you have to pray that way because there is something that you may not even be aware of some power of darkness that could be surrounding you your family That's or right. a particular area and the most high will put it up on your heart to pray in the spirit now i don't believe this you know there are some people that teach that you can pray in tongues at will mm -hmm. that's not the truth i've never seen anyone that that i know they have the rule like i've never been able to pray in tongues at will you know how it's always when the spirit come upon me the spirit you know uh, and i feel in the spirit that i would um actually um you know would speak in tongues so right and so you have people rejecting this because you have churches who are playing around with this thing saying i'm gonna teach you how to speak in tongues yeah. And they're telling people, do this, duh, 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 duh. you can't teach nobody how to speak in tongues. That's the foolishness that make people say, hmm, I don't know about this stuff. But don't let these people um, defraud you of a gift that the most high can give you. You know, I remember years ago in my neighborhood, we were, this black neighborhood in Detroit, right? In the hood, <laughs> mm -hmm. this um, Caucasian Gentile uh, preacher was going around uh, witnessing to the young black kids and we were some of the teenagers and so I was sitting I was like okay let's see what he talking you know mm -hmm. and I was young at the time you know and anyway uh he was starting to get a lot of these young people were, would come to come to this little little assembly that he had at a school he would get ripped at, with this room at a school and he was teaching these young people how to talk to us so I was like wait a minute I asked, got a friend of mine I was like oh his name was Dwight he was like Dwight he, uh, wait a minute he he was teaching you how to talk to us and yeah I was like, what is he telling you to say? He said, he told me to say, Oscar and da, 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 da. I'm, I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, dude. He can't teach you how to speak in tongues. No. You know, I said, that dude's a false prophet, you yes, know? Yeah. But it, I, I was like, I said, man, I had y'all, I, I went one time after that. I said, you know what? That's crazy, y'all. That's crazy. This, this guy can't teach you nobody how to can't speak do in that at tongues. All. You know? And um, I agree with this person here, too. The scripture also says not all will speak in tongues. That's right. Not all will prophesy. That's right. You know, even though the, the evidence of speaking in tongues is, you know, I mean, that's um, evidence of being filled with the Ruach, but that's not the only thing, though. There are so many other gifts that the Most High. Some people have that's the right. spirit of healing. Some people can lay yeah. hands. My former pastor, um, I, I've said many times this testimony how, he laid hands on this girl at our church who was born with one leg shorter and he healed her leg and it grew out. You see now gifts and callings come without repentance. Like I said, it don't make you nobody special because you have a gift. You just got it for whatever reason you mm -hmm. see. But um, this pastor, he, he was able to heal and I've seen him lay hands and heal a number of people. You see now, we, we just got to get an understanding of what all this stuff is. The scripture says, greater works than these shall you do. Mm -hmm. What are those greater works? That's what we need to be trying to grab hold of and making sure that we are in alignment with the Ruach HaKadosh so he can not only, it says, covet the best gifts, right? Not only that we get the gifts of the Spirit, but that we get those greater works that he's talking about, that spirit of Elijah type stuff where it says we will be able to call down yeah. fire from heaven right. to devour the enemy. That's, right. That's what I'm talking about.
the story that you told about your pastor too, the one that got me to was the one where he prophesied on that um, young man and said, if he don't give his life to the most high, that he'll be dead in seven days. Yes. Yeah. And he died on the seventh day. Yeah. Yeah. That, that one always, it just really kind of gets me to thinking, okay, we look at things and, and I tie that into the, the story of Eli, you know, yeah. how the most high told Hannah to send Samuel to him. Didn't That's he? Right, yeah. But didn't Eli have some issues? Eli had some issues. That's, that's you know what's <laughs> funny about that. I used to sit back and scratch my head on that. I said, man, Eli had issues. He didn't. He didn't. His sons had issues. And I said, but you wanted Hannah to send her son to him. Mm -hmm. That's something. So sometimes we don't understand things. You know, we can't be so judgmental, not understand what the Most High could be doing. Something. You know. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I look now. Let me let me lay some on you. Think about what I'm saying here, right? Now, I come out of a particular apostolic church, okay, mm -hmm. from years ago. Now, would I send any of my kids there? No. But I came out of there, right? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't I send any of my kids there? Because of the false doctrines and teachings. Mm -hmm. But why was it okay for me to go through there? Because that's the route the most I chose for me. Mm -hmm. See, that was the path that I had to go through, that path to get to where I am now. And I had to come out of all of those lies and false teachings. And then eventually I was able to make it to where I am now through following the Ruach. He kept guiding me into all truth. You see, so it's kind of like that. I mean, it's I wouldn't send my kids there because I know I know a lot of the religious stuff that they teach. I don't want my kids to pick up that stuff, you know. So Okay, for the person who asked, um, do they need to be rebaptized? Um, it's now that they've repented and everything, do they need to be rebaptized? Re We've covered that before too, and we would say yes. And also, I saw the question of um, how do you baptize yourself? Uh, we've been telling people, if you look at some of our previous videos, and we may do a separate video on this so that we can refer you, you all to that. But if you're in a place where you can't be baptized in the proper name or what have you, and again, you know, we, we're we not no always sure about the, yeah, you have no one to do it, do it yourself until you're able to get somewhere and, and, and have it done. Yeah. And we feel, and this is just, you know, from our research and study, the name Yah being in there, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yahushua, Yah is salvation, you see. Um, or some people say Yahusha, you see. Um, there's a lot of different things on the pronunciations and spellings and all of that, but we definitely know that is not the name of Jesus. Jesus yeah. You see, so um, we would say yes, get rebaptized. And then um, the person who says that their family is threatening them because they left the church, because they don't have a covering, they want to know what does that mean. Uh, basically, um, that's just a scare tactic. Okay, yeah. but to have a covering is to have a spiritual head. Okay, now technically a pastor is supposed to be that, but in a case where you have a pastor who's not teaching the truth, he is like those pastors that lead y'all's flock astray. Yeah, he's blind, it's like the blind leading the blind. Mm -hmm. It's like, do you want a covering like that? You know, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of like, I mean, think about this when you say covering. A person's laying in the bed, and they need to be covered in cold, right? Now, you, the person can go out to the shed to where the, the goats and the, and the dogs or wherever and grab one of these little blankets that they land on, come and throw it on. You want one of those? Uh, do you want to go to sleep with one of those nasty, <laughs> filthy blankets? Uh, or do you want a clean one? You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like that. You know, they, they say all the time, well, you need a covering, you need a covering, you need a covering. They themselves don't really have a good covering. Mm -hmm. Right. So in the case where you don't have a pastor or anything like that, yeah. Yahushua then becomes your covering. Yeah, that's you see? right. Because he says, my sheep hear my voice, and another they will not follow. Matter of fact, he would much rather that you learn how to lean on him and allow, and allow him to guide you and lead you and be be your covering, you know, before and once you learn how to get close to him and hear him and all of that, Trust me on it. Watch out. <laughs> because the people around you, they'll start to say, 
Well, man, you know, I, I'll never forget the day I come out of, um, uh, at the time I was a Baptist, you know. I come out of the Baptist church and I started going to Apostolic church. I ended up getting it receiving the Ruach, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget how my family responded. They responded. It was crazy. They just responded like, I got a couple of brothers that are pastors, you know, um, and my whole family has been strong Baptists, you know. But the way they came at me that day, it was like, man, all of them, they called me a curse, called me this, call, <laughs> you know. It's kind of funny because when I was when I was just out there in the world, in the world doing nothing, crazy stuff, then they were like, zipped. Nobody had nothing to say, you know. But the minute I, I decided to become a different religion, then everybody just had a fit. But anyway, that was back then, you know. They, but since then, though, right, this so-called um, brother that they felt was going astray continued my path with the Most High. Yes, and this and, is where we are And now. this is where I'm at now. They may still think I'm going astray because of the fact that I'm not preaching JC. Mm -hmm. I'm preaching Yah and Yahushua as the Savior. And I'm not into the religious Christian thing. So someone may think I'm a little... You know, different. They see me with the thing on my head now. The, the, one of yes. my brothers asked me if I was a um, a Muslim. <laughs> it's a, no, I ain't no Muslim, man. Oh, because I know it's that thing on your head. Well, no, no, I'm not a Muslim, you know. But, um, you know, it's, it's that's not, you know what I mean? People, just, they think these things. But, I mean, I continued, right? And sometimes we think that we need these pastors, we need these people, we need our family to back us on that. Let me tell you something. There's a family that will back you. And that family don't have to be a fleshly family. Mm -hmm. Okay? It can be your spiritual family. Yes, okay? Right here. That's right. Right here. We will be on your side. We you, you got how many together. people? That's right. How many people we have here in the chat? There's four, 543 people here. They can be your family, you know, and I think that's what we should concentrate on. And don't worry about your family. You just keep on living your life, doing your thing. And eventually, they don't come around and say, oh, I love you, man. <laughs> I guess what you're doing ain't that bad. You know? Yeah, I've been checking that too. And you know what? It sounds kind of right. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually, you know, but just keep doing your thing, you know. Now, this is not a question, but it's a statement someone made. And they were saying, and we agree um, that you all should read the Apocalypse of Elijah. There's yeah, a lot of these books. I have it, yeah. The, there's a lot of these books that need to be read because yeah. it brings a total different perspective than just the 66 books of the King James yeah. Version. A lot of these books will open up your understanding a lot more. But with all that getting, you get understanding. Yeah. You get wisdom from the Most High so that you can, you know, understand what it is you're reading. That's right. Uh, somebody said you got a brother right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we love you all, family. We really, truly do love you all. We thank you, thank the Most High for you all. You know, yes, uh, we love you. fellowshipping with you, and I can't wait to see some of you all at the event. I see you all, some of you all, for the first time at the event. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a wonderful thing. You know, I thank the Most High for this. You know, um, but I guess we're going to um, go ahead and and. Uh, complete this session, but we want you to continue to pray for us, you know, continue to pray for us, and um, we'll be praying for you all. I have a couple of announcements okay. real quick. Um, there's going to be two meetings tomorrow, one for the uh, Pursuit of Nappiness Project. Um, go to 12 Tribes Network to get information on that um, that meeting, and then there's going to be one for the Children's Book Series. Um, I'm going to repost on Facebook as well as on 12 Tribes Network, but we're going to have a conference call for all of those who want to participate in educating our children. That is so very important. And us coming together to make this happen, uh, we need to do this because the materials that are being given to us is, is not what we need. Okay, For so long, we've used their materials to try to educate ourselves. Now it's time for us to take over. It's time for us to take over the helm of our communities, of our education, of our food, all of that. We have some wonderful things in the works in terms of the direction we feel that the Most High is leading us. 
and anyone who wants to learn more about this, we're going to share it. Um, those who will hear or forbear is up to you. But we do feel that in this last day, um, the things are getting really tight. Okay, and so there are some directions that we have to go in as a people. Um, we're not going to be trying to browbeat anyone with anything. Uh, we're just going to put the information out there. And what people do with it will be completely up to them. But we wanted to do this message because we need to know what kind of times and days are upon us. Uh, there's a crazy, wicked election going on right now. And um, the, you see what the options are. And we kind of see what direction everything is headed in. Um, if you if you're paying attention to anything, it don't look too pretty. Yeah. And so I think it's time for our people to get a lot more serious, a lot more serious yeah, about the absolutely. direction you're headed in, and stop feeling like you got all this time to be messing around on this earth. That's right. It's time for us to do what we have to do as a people. Time to unify with those who you can unify with. I know yeah. we usually say come together as a people, but we already know that that's not happening because there's too much division. In, in Israel. Yeah. So what we have to do is unify with those who we can unify with. Yeah. Even if it's a small group, even if it's, even if it's only a handful of people, so be it. Yeah. But that unification has to take place here and now. That's right. Absolutely. We love you, family. We thank you for tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you for your support. I was just relaxing this. <laughs> I took that moment to say, okay, I'm going to chill for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to get some rest today. Yes, absolutely. Glad to be finally done with part three. So, of generational me, curses. Generational curses, that's right. So it's um, giving me an opportunity to get some rest now. But anyway, uh, we thank you all. We love you we all. Thank you, and we love you, family. We want you to enjoy the rest of your day. That's right. Until we meet again. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.